As a matter of fact, it was last year on Christmas. My father, I was in a car with him. He was like, I'm about to go pick up Riley. Came back up to my grandmother's house. Riley was up there. She still- He had Riley at Riley your grandmother's house? house? At my grandmother's house. You're on. Why do you have the doubt? When I first met her at a party. I found out after this, because that's when we met. She uh, slept with four guys that night. It was four my friend. Four guys in one night? Yes, one night. As a woman, at least say, Robert, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For him playing video sorry games? Sorry for what? For being a liar, for being a manipulator, for you on your unborn child when you knew he wasn't the father. Hold your horses because the episode starts with Judge Lake pulling a magic show opener, getting everyone hyped up before jumping headfirst into today's hot mess. Ms. Johnson, caught in a love spaghetti that's more twisted than headphone cords, trying to untangle the mystery of whether her lover or her husband is the real daddy of her daughter. You'll be glued to your seat for what's coming up next. And I want my name put on the birth certificate, and I wanted to be able to see her anytime I get ready. Oh, now, take me back. How did you meet Miss Johnson in the first place? It was during the summer of 08. A uh, partner and myself, we were riding, and I went by a family member house of her, and she was out on the porch and had on some little short shorts, and we exchanged numbers. Just when you think it can't get crazier, Mr. Anderson spills the beans on his wild ride of a romance with Miss Johnson, a story so full of twists and turns, you'd think it was cooked up in a soap opera writer's room. From sneaky texts to emotional whirlwinds, this love triangle could give Shakespeare a run for his money. Buckle up, because the next bit is a doozy. How she had, you know, messed around before on, on her husband. So you feel like you were in a relationship? We, we were for, for a certain time. You know, like I said, you know, things was good when he was gone because he wasn't there. They were separated. He wasn't okay. there. And, you know, she was spending a lot of... And then, boom, they roll out a calendar to map out Ms. Johnson's love life showdown between the two gents with dates overlapping faster than you can say Maury Povich. Ms. Johnson cracks a joke about making Excel her new BFF for tracking her love interests. And, oh boy, you won't believe the twist that's about to drop. I was with them. Thank you. All right, you have here that outlined in yellow are the dates you were intimate with Mr. Anderson, which would be the plaintiff. Now, outlined in green, you have the dates that you admittedly were intimate with your husband, Mr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. And then outlined in red are when you could have conceived. Yes, out of the blue, Ms. Johnson drops a bomb about not knowing who the real daddy is, turning her pregnancy into a guessing game that's more Maury than Maury itself, minus the screaming matches and with more spreadsheet action. Hang on to your hats, because the next part will flip your lid. And so when you came up pregnant, did you know exactly who the father was? No, ma'am, I didn't know. I told I was up front with my husband. I told him that I was pregnant, that I wasn't 100% sure that it was his, but he was excited. He said, we're, we're going to do this. I also called Mr. Anderson and told him that I was pregnant. But that I was gonna be with my husband. Then, like a plot twist in a spy movie, Mr. Anderson reveals he's been secretly visiting Briley, stirring the pot in this already boiling family drama. He quips about his ninja-like sneaking skills, and just when you think it's all tangled up, the next scene is about to throw another curveball. Yes, ma'am. Miss Johnson herself has met me at the ballpark and let me see Briley. Her mother that is a uh, lie. sneaks around, let me meet her uh, go at grocery stores, at football games and stuff. Yeah, they have, but it's always, he don't know nothing about it when they do. We may have seen each other at the ballpark or something, but I've never intentionally carried my daughter to meet Your Honor, Your Honor, it was last year when she turned three. Cue dramatic music as Mr. Anderson's son steps up, throwing everyone for a loop with claims of secret family meetups orchestrated by Ms. Johnson. This soap opera level plot thickens, making everyone double check their family trees. And if you thought that was bonkers, the next scene is going to knock your socks off. He has been to our, my uh, function with us on Christmas. As a matter of fact, it was last year on Christmas. My father, I was in a car with him. He was like, I'm about to go pick up Riley. Came back up to my grandmother's house. Riley was up there. She still- He had Riley at your grandmother's house? Her at my grandmother's house. As Judge Lake preps to unleash the DNA results, the air is so tense you could slice it with a butter knife. With everyone perched on the edge of their seats, popcorn at the ready, we're about to dive into a reveal that could flip their world on its head. The emotional roller coaster of this climax will leave you gobsmacked. That's my husband. You don't do nothing about what we do. Oh, my kids, now you gonna tell me. I'm scared that my husband, this is, my whole marriage is riding on this. My marriage is gonna be over. A lot of stuff it'll change. We'll see. A lot of stuff it'll change. First of all, like I said, your name, your name. It's on there now. Do you all want to keep arguing back and forth, or do you want to hear the results? Let's get these results. And then, like a clown popping out of a tiny car, the DNA test results burst onto the scene, throwing everyone for a loop you didn't see coming. It has been determined that her biological father is 
Mr. Anderson. Told. Your Honor, may I see my like little sister? Brother. May I see my little sister? And I can yes. show you that she does yes. not, like, she doesn't acknowledge the fact, like, acknowledge her, I, she doesn't know, know y'all. May I see my daughter? It's up to me. I'm her mother. Uh, I, I'm the father. See, that's what I've dad. had to deal with right now. Ms. Ferguson brings her mother to court, turning what you'd expect to be a dull day of legal proceedings into an episode of Who's Your Daddy that no one signed up for. This moment is like the season opener of a drama series you can't miss, showcasing the roller coaster of emotions and the tangled web of family secrets. Ms. Munsell dropping a paternity bombshell with all the grace of a reality TV star adds a layer of intrigue and suspense to the family saga. And just when you think you've seen it all, the next chapter promises even more twists and turns. Miss Ferguson, you've brought your mother to court today because you were recently shocked to learn that Ken Ferguson, who raised you your entire life, may not be your biological father. Ms. Munsell, you acknowledge that you finally confessed to your daughter that you slept with more than one man at the time of her conception. You two are unsure what today's results will reveal. You repair the relationship your daughter. Alicia Ferguson, feeling more betrayed than someone who finds out their favorite series finale was just a dream, airs her grievances. It's like watching a live feed from the Jerry Springer show, minus the chair throwing. As she navigates this emotional minefield, we get VIP tickets to the Ferguson family's dysfunction junction. The revelation of Alicia's feelings of neglect and betrayal is like adding a plot twist to an already spicy telenovela. If you're intrigued now, wait until you see what's coming next. Please Please go check on Ms. Munsell and Ms. Ferguson. Yes, ma'am. I need to understand. You were with the stepfather, your stepfather. Yes. And you finally just said to him. Yes, I let it all out. Everything I was keeping secrets from him. Yes, I was supposed to be her little secret keeper. You know, I was supposed to be the only one to know that she was sleeping around. And okay. I couldn't handle it anymore. Ken Ferguson, who's pretty sure he's Alicia's bio dad, shares his doubts about paternity, thanks to Diana Munsell's past escapades. As he spills the tea on Diana's infidelity and the heartache buffet it served, it's like peeking into a soap opera, reminding us that adulting is hard, especially with kids caught in the crossfire. This moment is like a spotlight on the drama and uncertainty cheating brings to the family dinner table, with a side of emotional turmoil. The story takes an even more compelling turn in the next scene. Can you step up, please? You thought, Miss Ferguson, this young woman was your daughter. Yeah, I believe she was my daughter. Why do you have the doubt? When I first met her at a party, I found out after this, because that's when we met. She uh, slept with four guys that night. It was four my friend. Four guys in one night? Yes. One night. Diana Munsell tries to slide into the apology DMs, hoping to patch things up with Alicia. It's like watching someone trying to glue a shattered vase back together. Messy, complicated, and with sharp edges. This part is a real-life lesson in saying my bad and the Herculean effort to mend fences, especially when you've turned the backyard into a war zone. It's about the bumpy road to forgiveness and the yearning for a hallmark-worthy mother-daughter reunion. The climax of this saga is up next, and it's something you won't want to miss. And admit to my face what she did was wrong and I shouldn't have seen it and I shouldn't have this feeling. So are you willing to give your mother a chance to apologize today? No matter what the result, will you give her a chance? I, would. I mean, as she stood here today, she appeared to be extremely emotional. It's because she's never admitted. When the paternity test results finally hit the scene, and just when you think it's all over, life yells encore. Because let's face it, there's always another surprise scene waiting in the wings. When it comes to Alicia Ferguson, Mr. Ferguson, you are her father. The case kicks off with everyone throwing their hats into the ring, where Ms. Allen makes her grand entrance, claiming Mr. Childs is the father of her daughter, Ms. Baylor. Mr. Childs and his wife, on the other hand, are in the denial camp, shaking their heads faster than a bobblehead on a bumpy road. Just when you think it can't get any wilder, the next segment proves you wrong. Ms. Allen, you say that after a brief affair with Mr. Child, you discovered you were pregnant with your daughter, Ms. Baylor. You say Mr. Childs acknowledged paternity until his wife convinced him otherwise. You intend to prove that Mr. Child is, in fact, your daughter's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The paternity dispute intensifies with Ms. Allen and Mr. Childs, sharing their versions of the pregnancy announcement and ensuing conflicts, illustrating the complexity and emotional toll of the situation. In an unexpected twist, Mr. Childs admits his initial reaction was to check if storks were indeed involved, given the bewildering circumstances. Ms. Allen, not to be outdone, claims she considered naming the baby, Who's Your Daddy?, to keep the mood light amidst the tension. What happens next will surely catch you 
off guard. You say you got pregnant, and once you got pregnant, did you tell Mr. Childs, I'm pregnant and I think it could be yours? Actually, it was rumors, so he came you to me. You spread the rumors. People are coming okay, to me. Okay, if, if I have family, family, if I have family, whatever, but why aren't you telling the truth? You didn't know who the father was. Well, you, you knew you that were from day that, one. You were telling that. You knew that from day one. That's not what you were saying, though. The you rumor that, that you put out one. there. Hold on. Various testimonies and accusations are exchanged, including Ms. Allen's admittance to testing another man for paternity, shedding light on the confusion and mistrust surrounding Ms. Baylor's paternity. The plot thickens as a confused pizza delivery guy is also brought in for questioning after showing up at the wrong time too many times, making everyone question the pizza's role in this intricate drama. The next piece of the puzzle is even more bewildering. That is true. Tell the court about that. That is true, but that was somebody that I wasn't even messing with him. This was somebody that you test came Why would you test it? someone you aren't messing with? Because this is, this, he, young, she he, was fishing. He came out, he came out and asked me, and he said, you know, I was messing with your mom around the time. I wanted, I wanted to get a DNA test with you. Okay, someone reached out to you, yes. Ms. Baylor, and said, I think I may be your father. The emotional and logistical challenges of establishing paternity are discussed, including past attempts to connect and acknowledge paternity, the role of child support, and the enduring hope for resolution and family bonds. Amidst the serious discussions, a lighthearted moment arises when someone suggests using a magic eight ball for paternity answers, leading to laughs and a brief respite from the heavy atmosphere. But wait, there's a twist coming that will change everything. She knew I told her to sit down and told her the whole story. Yeah, she told me after. She didn't like tell me before, but she told me after the fact when my stepdad did say that. Okay. No, she sat down and talked to me when I brought it to her attention. Like, and I then, don't know what's going on. I'm confused. I know, I'm honey. Confused too, I know, and that's why I'm trying to understand this. At the end of the day, you have a right to understand exactly what happened. Eleven years ago, you would have been nine, baby. Yes, yes. ma'am. So you made an attempt yes, to meet Miss yes, Baylor at nine years old. Yes, ma'am. Final arguments and evidence, like the eyebrow-raising fact that Mr. Childs's biological kids seem to have an extra finger, talk about a handy inheritance, are laid out, ratcheting up the suspense for those DNA results. Everyone's on the edge of their seat, popcorn in hand, wondering if they're about to witness a real-life plot twist. The climax of this story is something you won't want to miss. Uh, a DNA test, nothing. No. All right. Your Honor, she just made me feel like she wanted me to be the father by name. So if someone asked her what? who Shy's father was, she could say me. You know, Your Honor, Please. I'm not being funny or anything. But but, okay, I, I, I was a good catch. I'm not gonna lie, I was a good catch. So, so I can understand, you know, where she was coming from then. I would've made sure she was fine, I would've made sure the child was fine, all that would've been good. The DNA test results come in hotter than a pot of tea on the stove, revealing Mr. Childs's... When it comes to 20-year-old Shinesha Baylor, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Child, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Miss Baylor. It's okay, Your Honor. You know, at the same time. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Okay, so Judge Lake, who's clearly had her morning coffee, greets the crowd with the enthusiasm of a host at a game show and dives straight into the juicy drama of Hicks versus Narvez. Mr. Hicks, who seems as confused about baby names as he is about paternity, has dragged his ex-wife to court for a DNA test on their bundle of joy, Yazalan, amidst their tumultuous split. He's visibly flabbergasted, probably wondering if Maury Povich does group discounts. Brace yourselves. The plot thickens. In a moment, you won't believe. Just you wait. The next scene will have your jaw on the floor. You have brought your ex-wife to court and requested a paternity test to prove that you are indeed the biological father of her baby. Is it Yazeline? Yazeline. Yazeline. Beautiful. Who was born during your marriage. You state you are the only father she has known from cutting the cord in the hospital mm -hmm. to signing her birth certificate and are shocked and dismayed that your wife is now disputing Absolutely. that she is yours. You won't believe what happens next. Mr. Hicks, channeling every soap opera character ever, shares his heartbreak and disbelief, painting a picture of a world turned upside down faster than a pancake at IHOP. Miss Narvaez, doubling down on her soap opera villain persona, insists that Mr. Hicks playing dad is as likely as finding a unicorn at a pet store. The drama thickens, ensuring the court's popcorn supply is going to take a hit. Next up, an emotional roller coaster that will have you on the edge of your seat. You're not ready for what's coming up. How I was deceived is that she said that the baby, I believe that the baby is mother. And you try to say that the baby isn't ours, I don't believe that. 
You know? You need to believe because she's, she's not, not yours. Good. No. Look at the baby. Look at her. She's white. She looks like me. She looks nothing like you. You're hearing she stories. Like it's me? irrelevant the she stories that you're she hearing. She looks nothing like me. She looks, she looks nothing, nothing like, you. like you. How are you going to say that? She, might, she, she doesn't have to look like me. She's mine. Is Dad be your husband if you're in a marriage? Mm. No, Your Whoa. Honor. Get ready for a plot twist that will turn everything on its head. In a twist worthy of an Oscar, Mr. Hicks gives a passionate defense of his dad credentials, arguing that fatherhood isn't just about DNA, but about who's there to check for monsters under the bed. His heartfelt speech about the true essence of being a dad adds a layer of depth to the circus, reminding everyone that amidst the chaos, there's a real family story unfolding. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more intense, hold on, the next revelation is going to flip everything upside down. Right? Yeah. The baby's name is Yezalyn Savannah Janae Hicks, not Osorio Hicks. Hicks. <laughs> the father. Why did you let me cut the cord? Why did you give the baby my last name? Why? Exactly why, why I told why? you to sign why? your rights over. Have your last name back. We don't want it. Hold on to your popcorn. This next part is a doozy. Carla Hicks, a relative, jumps into the fray with allegations of Miss Narvaez's infidelity and hold on to your hats, possibly moonlighting as a lady of the night. This spicy addition throws a wrench into the already tangled web of the case, making everyone question what other skeletons might be dancing in Miss Narvaez's closet. This revelation sends shockwaves through the courtroom, turning what was already a circus into a full-blown reality TV drama, minus the commercial breaks and dramatic background music. But wait, there's more drama ahead that will leave you speechless. Trust me, you'll want to see what's next. Was there anything she was hiding from you when she met you? No, man. So no. everything about you know her what? life she, she told? She told me she didn't have no sexual contact with him. She wasn't living with him. Even her mom told me she wasn't living with him. <laughs> she was lying. You know but when you met Ms. Navarro, you knew she was a married woman, but she just was not living with her husband. That's what you heard. That's what she That's told what you me. were told. You believe you are the father. I am the father. <laughs> because father's not the only one that, that has them and leaves them. Father's the one that spends time and quality time and be there for them and tell what's right and wrong. This next moment is the big one, folks. As Judge Lake gears up to unveil the DNA test results, you could cut the tension with a knife, assuming you could find one strong enough. It's the moment of truth, the peak of the roller coaster, the final countdown. Choose your metaphor. They all fit. This is where hopes and fears collide, creating a suspenseful climax that has everyone on the edge of their seats. Popcorn forgotten. The anticipation is palpable, with the potential to either mend hearts or break them into a million pieces, proving once and for all that daytime TV has nothing on real-life drama. What happens next will redefine everything you just seen. Just when you think you've seen it all, the story takes an even crazier turn. I'm ready for results. Um, I'm hating Mr. Hicks is that because this child was born during your marriage, you are presumed to be the father. You are the legal father of the child. You signed the birth certificate. You were there for the birth. Most men would come into court trying to rebut that presumption, but you've come into this court because you want it validated. This part is truly unforgettable. The bombshell that Mr. Hicks isn't Yazalan's real dad turns the courtroom into a roller coaster of emotions, tossing in a salad of feelings, tangled relationships, and the messy spaghetti of paternity issues. Miss Narvaez's stone cold non apology and Judge Lake's stern wag of the finger bring a spicy dish of moral and ethical quandaries to the table. It's like watching a soap opera, but with legal documents and less hair pulling. And let's not forget the awkward silence that followed, so thick you could cut it with a gavel. The next turn of events is something no one could have predicted. Oh, but it gets even wilder from here, if you can believe it. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Hicks, you are not oh. her you. father. Oh. You should have just signed your name and you would have looked stupid. Did you I not tell you signed your rights just over? Now, even more right now. I hope you know you just busted your own bubble. It's all Whatever. good. Okay. As a woman, at least say, Robert, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For you, him playing you video games? Sorry game? for what? For being a liar, for being a manipulator, for me on your own. Born child, when you knew he wasn't the father, you were looking for a substitution for the one you couldn't be with. <laughs> then, boom, Mr. Osorio is. Mr. Osorio, you also agreed and submitted to a DNA test. You are her father. Take the silence in the courtroom right now. Just take it in, and there is a lesson in this moment. You believed this baby was yours. You stated that to this court.